God is good. Tell your neighbor you look good. Tell your neighbor you look good. Tell your neighbor you are loved. Tell your neighbor you are special. You are made in his image. See, and, th and, and, and this family, we'll, we build each other up. We don't tear each other down. We build up. That's what the house of God is for. So if, we're, so if the world is not telling us we look good, here we're telling you you look good. Hey, hey, hey. there we go. That, that, that's, that's why I love Sister Marielle. Always right on time and on point, sister. Hey, man, God is good. God is good. God is good. So, today, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about a topic that a lot of us, a lot of us deal with on the regular basis. Can, can anybody relate to this? You have this guy that's sitting down with his head, he's pulling out every single hair that he has. He has a hammer and chisels and all kinds of things that's kind of coming at him. Have you ever been in that place? But you just don't know. And if you knew, you necessarily don't have, to, don't have to be in the desk. You could be driving and you feel like all these things are coming down on you. Or you could be in your house and you feel like all these things are coming down on you. And things are happening left and right. And you get sick and your finances are hurting. And, and next thing you know, your husband decides to fight with you. Or your wife decides to fight with you. Your partner decides to fight with you. You're like, what is going on? Have, has anybody ever been there? Or is it me? I, I, I feel like I'm constantly going through that. I'm like, my goodness. I'm like, what is going on here? You know, but, but we know that the enemy has a plan, and his plan is to destroy anything that God is trying to do. So when we go through these things, it's important for us to know that our source overcame all those things. We know, we got to know that our source, our source is way greater than, than, than anything that the world could throw at us. Our source, our source that lives inside, right? He that is in you is what? Greater. Is what? Greater. Is what? Greater. You got to declare it. He that's in me is greater. So whenever the world throws anything, you just got to say it and remember, he that is in me is greater than that, and I shall overcome. Repeat it. Say it. I, I shall, shall overcome. You will overcome because God has given you that. He has given you the victory. So the title of today's message is simple, press but not broken. Has anybody ever felt like they've been pressed from every single angle, from every single thing that kind of... Or it's just been me that, that's had those days where just everything, from the moment you wake up in the morning and you're in a bad mood, and you're like, what happened? I was tossing and turning all night. Oh, it said three and a half hours. Hold on, let me look at my Fitbit application. Nah, brother, you slept two hours, and you were, you were awake for an hour and a half. And you're like, awake for an hour and a half? But I, I guess technology, <laughs> back to technology. Technology tells you all these, all these cool things. But those things when you're just like, man, you wake up in the wrong side of the bed, right? And then you get up, and you get mad at your alarm clock because this is so annoying. Because, you know, in New York, you wake up in the morning, and as soon as you wake up, you're looking at the clock. You're like, man, I got to go do something. I got I to gotta go to work. I got to go to school. I got, I, I got appointments. I got all these things to do. And, and as soon as we wake up in the morning, we're looking at the time. Oh, man, my train leaves at 6.15 in the morning. That means I got to be up by 5 o'clock in the morning, which means that by 5.45, I have to be out the door, and I have to be at the train station at about 6.10 in order for 6.15 train to come, and I'm on my way to work. So we're like, we're constantly, you know, on the, on the move, right? And, and, and then what happens? So now you're up and cranking, you get up in the morning, and you get to the train station, and all of a sudden, ding dong, ladies and gentlemen, we have delays. And you're like, seriously? I have a meeting. I have a meeting that I need to be at a certain place at a certain time for. And, and now I'm dealing with train delays. Oh, my goodness. What is going on? So now you're rushing to your meeting and you're running or wherever it is that you're going to. And then you get there and it's like, well, the meeting has been canceled. Oh, great. You know, like, and I'm telling you because I just speak from experience. These are the type of things that kind of happen sometimes. And, and you feel like, man, everything is just not, not going right. You know, and, and, and then somebody, somebody sends you a message or something like that, and, and, and you never get it because your phone has been acting up, and, and all of a sudden, now, now you have somebody that's upset with you, not pointing any fingers to the back row, and next thing you know, you're like, did, did, you, did you get my message? Um, what message? Don't talk to me. No, nah, you know, so, so what happens? You know, we all have these times where we're like, man, what is going on, you know? And then all of a sudden, you go, you, you, you go into the store, you got to pay for something, and the bank just decides to block your car to, to protect you from fraud. So now you're going through the embarrassment of going to buy something, and people look at you like, look at this, look at this dude right here, has no money in his account. I'm like, no, 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 it's Chase, blame them. <laughs> you know, so 
and, 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 and then just things keep happening, and, and, and then somebody annoys you, and then somebody cuts you off in traffic, and you're like upset, you know, and, 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 and then you go to the gas pump, and, you, and you're trying to pay for gas, and all of a sudden the pump stops working, and you're like, seriously? What, what, what's going on, you know? And, and it's just all those little things that come and hit you from all angles, and you're like, man, what is going on? Have you ever been to that point where you're just like, what is going on in my life? But you have nowhere to look. You look left problems. You look right problems. You look down problems. You have nowhere else to do, right? No, nowhere else to go. What do you do at that point? Look up. Look up and find your strength. Amen? So points that, we, points that, we, that, are we going, that we're going to cover, what is it to be pressed? We're going to talk about what do you do when you feel hard pressed. And then we're going to talk about pressed, not broken. And we're going to dig into a little, a little Bible history of a pretty cool place. So pressed, what does it mean to be pressed? To act upon with steadily applied weight or force, right? When you press something, right? So, you know, you got car tires, right? What kind of, what, what kind of pressure do you need on those things, right? You, you, you need a constant pressure on those things, right? Because you don't want to be moving a 2,000-pound vehicle with no pressure on your tire, right? So, so you put this air, and this air applies pressure to your tire, right? And, 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 and this, applied, this applied force that, that, that's in there is what allows you to move, right? So you have this, you have this applied weight of force, right? Has, has anybody ever felt like, so like, like, you, like this, this, this force pressed on you? Like, you know, sometimes the stresses of this world or maybe, or maybe the stresses of school and you have papers to do and you have homework and you have all these things and you're like, man, I can't do this. What's going on? You know, where at work, they just hit you with a, with a whole pile of work, and all of a sudden, you have to do three weeks of work in a week, and you're like, okay, what am I going to do here? And you start feeling the pressure. You see, some of us, some of us perform great under pressure. I mean, some of us, I think, might even need it in order to get the best of us. You know, I, I remember those days when I was in school, and, and I would procrastinate, you know, and I would be like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll just get this research paper done. I have a week. And then, and then the paper's due on Friday, and, I, and here I am, Thursday night at 8 p.m. starting. Okay, here we go. Come on, come on, come on. Let's focus, let's focus. Come on, Lord, help me. And next thing you know, in like three hours, you're done, and you have, you have this, like, this awesome thing. And, you know, some of us need the, need the, need the time. Some of us, you know, we, we all operate different. But how is it that, how is it that we're going to react when we're, when we're under the pressure? Are we going to break, or are we going to rise up to the occasion? You know, um, it, also, it also means to move by weight and force in a certain direction or to a certain position, right? So somebody maybe might be pushing you towards doing something maybe that might make you a bit uncomfortable, you know? Maybe, maybe, maybe you're, uh, you know, maybe you just, you, just came, you just came to God and, and you know, and, and, and you're growing and you're moving and all of a sudden there you're being asked to do something, something different. Be like, hey, you know what, maybe I want to, maybe, 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 maybe you should maybe start focusing on this area of ministry. And you're like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm, 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 whoa, 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 what am I going to do? I've never been there, Lord. What happened? You know, and again, you know, you, 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 you feel that, that. And at times we all need it. And it's a good thing, you know, when you feel that, when you feel that little nudge of God pulling you and telling you to say, hey, it's time to grow. Hey, it's time to grow. Hey, you know what? Maybe it's time to do more. Maybe, 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 maybe you feel like you've been doing enough, but maybe God is saying, no, 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 hold on. Let's just, let's just, let's just get, a, get, a, get a little bit more done. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe we feel like we're doing a whole lot, and reality, we're not. And we're like, you know, but the good thing is that God has placed people around you to kind of lead you and kind of, and kind of push you in that direction. Amen? So God is good, and, he, and he's going to put those people around you. It also means to compress or squeeze as to alter shape and size, right? So has anybody ever felt squeezed? <laughs> right? And I'm not talking about your daddy hugging you, okay, Angelina? But, you know, have you ever felt that way where you're just like, oh, I can't do much more. And then when you can't do much more, you're being asked to do more. Oh, my God, Lord, how am I going to do this? Help me. To be set or harass. Has anybody ever felt harassed? Anybody ever felt that? Or has anybody ever felt troubled or oppressed? Anybody ever felt troubled or oppressed? Right? Or, or, or has anybody ever felt this heavy weight upon you? Right? What do we do in these situations? You push forward. Amen? All right, so what do we do? And it's funny because, I, you know, I, I was looking at, 
you know, I was, I'm just kind of searching online and seeing, you know, just, I don't know, I get pulled into these kind of cool things. And I, I, was, I was looking up a, a, the process of, you know, how you make apple cider. I was like, this is pretty cool. I mean, I like apple cider, you know, like, you know, everybody here like apple cider too? Right? And, and it's pretty cool because the process of, you know, of, of making apple cider, you know, first and foremost, you know, you go and grab a whole bunch of apples and, and the apples have to go through this grinder. Right, so you have you have you have a car full of apples, and there's this big old machine here that is, is a grinder. You know, ever seen a grinder? You know, it has like all these spikes on it, and it just crushes things. So the people grab the apples and they throw them in the grinder, and it's actually pretty awesome because the apple is crushing like 0.5 milliseconds. You know, like this thing is, it goes right through, and next thing you know, it's a million pieces. So you know, the apple goes through that process, right? So it goes through the grinder, and it has to get chopped up, it has to get broken in pieces, and then it goes to the next part. Right, so it goes into this bucket, right, and all you have all these pieces of apple, and like, man, this apple is just torn to shreds, right? So the apple is there torn to shreds. They go from being in the tree, nice and pretty looking, to boom, take it, being taken down. Now, if you ever go to one of those apple farms, you know, not only can you buy apple cider, but what else can you buy? Apples, right? It's the apple farm, right? So, so you're at the farm, and, you know, when you go in there, you're going to see all these beautiful apples, you know? Why? Because they take the best ones and they put them up there in the front, right? And then, and then the apples that are, you know, kind of a bit, you know, not, not, not too big in size or, or maybe might have a little, I don't know, maybe not, not fully, um, you know, not, not fully developed, you could say. These are the small ones, the ones that are a little beat up. They grab those and they throw those into the cider. <laughs> right? So, that, so then, you know, so, so now, now, you have, now, now you, have this, you, know, you have this bucket of, you know, crushed apples. And then these crushed apples get taken and they're put in this barrel, right? So this is big old barrel, and they just take all those crushed apples, all those shredder apples, and throw them in there. And then what they do, they take a cap, put it on top. And the cap, you gotta spin the top, so it's like, you know, so it's there covered, and then you gotta keep twisting it, so it could keep, so as you're twisting it, it keeps going down and applying more pressure and more pressure and more pressure. So you keep doing that. And, and, and you keep applying the pressure and applying the pressure, and next thing you know, you start getting what? You're going to get this liquid. You're going to get the cider that comes out of the, of, of the barrel, and it goes, you know, through a filtering process, eventually ends up on your shelves, end up, ends up in your fridge. You know, why am I talking about this, you know? These things are pressed hard. They're pressed out. You know, they're pressed so hard to squeeze every last bit of it. The apple does not look the same anymore than it was in the tree. It doesn't look the same by submitting to the pressure of refining. That apple is able to produce a sweetness that quenches your thirst. What am I here to tell you today? That whatever it is that you might be going through, go through the process. Because what's going to come out after the process is going to quench your thirst. What comes out after the process is going to be your blessing. Who can attest to that? Who here, who, who here has been going through hell and has been able to receive the blessing right after going through that process? Who here has been through that roller coaster? And to get to that process, to get to, get to that end result. Who here had to get crushed and shredded apart in order to get to that, to that place? You see, if you're willing, right, because God wants a willing heart. If you're willing to say, God, I'm here, have your way, God is going to put you through that process. And in that process, he's going to tell you, you know what? You have a problem with pride. Yeah, you, you, don't, like what people, you don't like when people point out that, that you're doing this wrong or you're doing that wrong. No, it's always somebody else's fault. You ever meet people like that? It's always somebody else's fault. It's never their fault. They, they can never, ever acknowledge, hey, I messed up. No, it's somebody else's fault all the time, right? You allow God to get you through that process, he's going to point that in your face. It says, you don't need to change, my friend, not those around you. Amen? Amen. So what else happens? What happens when you're in that process? Maybe, maybe, maybe you might be the person that, 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 that thinks you're, you're a good team player. And next thing you know, you don't realize that you're not a good team player until God puts it, puts it in your face. No, 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 no. You're, you're, you're selfish. You want everything for you, and you want everything your way. You know, and God is saying, uh-uh-uh, you come to me, you, but you, you, I, I, I'm, and if you open up your heart and say, I want change, God is going to remove that. Trust me, we all go through it. We all go, we, we've all been through processes. But what's the end result? 
How often do we feel like those apples making their way through the press? How many of us have been feeling like everything from all sides is coming down on us? Anybody ever been there? But you just feel the pressure, and then you got more pressure, and more pressure, and more pressure, and more pressure. You're like, what am I going to do, God? Help me. See, Paul, right, everybody knows the Apostle Paul, he found himself in a place like that. As he, as he traveled through spreading the gospel to the, er, to, to the early church, right? We all know Paul, right? Paul was like, Paul was like, he was like the, the, the hitman for the Jews, you know? He said, Christians, I'm going to kill you. Whatever way, shape, or form that he could go and persecute Christians, he was doing it. And then God revealed himself to him. And he had an encounter, after he had that encounter, his whole life changed. And then he took all that energy that he was putting into persecuting Christians to bring in the word and to lift other people up and bring in salvation pretty much to the world. But it wasn't easy for him. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 1.8, and I'll read it for you. The word says, and this is Paul writing to the church in Corinth, it says, for we... Do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measures, above strength, so that we can, be, so we can despair even of life. He said, we went through so much that we even hated life. I don't know about you guys, but there's been times in my life when I'm like, I just can't have it anymore. But you're just like, I, I don't want to do it no more. I want to give up. You know, and the enemy being the wicked enemy that he is, he's going to take advantage of that. He's going to know. All right, you know what? I sense weakness. I sense, I, sense somebody, I sense a lack of faith over here. Oh, wait a minute. I, I think I see an open door. Hold on, hold on. This person is still leaving the door open. Let me get in here. And at that moment of your weakness, Best believe that he's going to come in there. He's going to try to take you out. But remember, he that's in you is greater. Amen. So, as we continue, he found himself with great pressure. The pressure they felt they could not endure. Maybe, maybe that's how you feel now. If you, find yourself, if you find yourself crying out to God, asking him to remove this pressure, to remove this pain, this pain that's crushing you from all sides. Listen to what he says, right? So here we have Paul, and Paul is telling them, look, what we've gone through has been crazy. Like, it, it, it's just been so difficult for us to endure. Maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe, maybe, maybe you got diagnosed with a certain sickness. Maybe, maybe, maybe your, your, your family's falling apart. You know, whatever the circumstance is, and you're like, I can't take this anymore. This is way too much of a burden. God, help me. Has anybody ever been there? Look what he says afterwards, though. On, on chapter 4, verse 8 through 12, it says, We are pressed in every way, hedged in, but not crushed. Perplexed, unsure of finding a way out, but not driven to despair. Hunted down and persecuted, but not deserted. Struck down, but never destroyed. Always carrying around in the body of the dying of Jesus, so that the resurrection life of Jesus may also be shown within our body. For we who live are constantly experiencing the threat of being handed over to, over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the resurrection of, so that the resurrection life of Jesus also may be evidence in our mortal bodies, which is subject to death. So, so physical death is actively at work in us. But spiritual life is actively at work in you. So, he's telling you, look, we've been through all this, but just remember, he's basically telling you, he that's in you is, then that that's in the world. He's reminding you, look, you know what, regardless of all that, you know what, we did this, you know, we got to be persecuted for this, you know, because, you know, being a Christian is not the cool thing to be, you know, you're, you're going to get ridiculed, you're going to be mocked, people are going to look at you like, what is wrong with you, you're giving 10% you're giving of your salary, and I'm like, brother, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't understand 
that the reason why we're here is because of him. The reason why we're getting, why we're getting paid, why we get paid is because of him. The least we could do is give him his part, amen? Why? Because, you know, God, God is, he, he's, he's just so awesome that he's just not going to multiply it. He's going to go beyond and, and, and way further than what we could imagine. He just wants our heart. And if your heart is right with God, you're going to give God what's his. And next thing you know, when, 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 when you start getting job offers left and right, and next thing you know, when, 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 when your career starts expanding, and next thing you know, when you're getting these raises and you get promotions and, you, and you're getting this much more business, all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, you know, you, know, you, know what, you know what? He says you were faithful in the small. You were faithful when you were down there in the bottom. And, and, and even when you were down there, I had a plan for you. I just needed to get you to the point where you're at now. And, may, and, may, and maybe some of us might, might be battling with that. You know what? Just, just giving God what, what's his. Are, are, are we praying enough? Or are, are we giving him the time? Are we spending time in his word? Are we spending time, you know, doing what we're supposed to do as Christians? When pressed by all sides, what do we produce? I heard somebody once say a long time ago, when you squeeze the orange... What do you get? Orange juice. When you crush an apple, what do you get? Apple juice. When you, crush a, when, 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 you, when you squeeze a Christian, what do you get? What is it? When you squeeze a Christian, what do you get, Carrie Ann? Perfection. That's the Rebecca. What do, you, what do you get when you squeeze a Christian? You got Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So when you get squeezed, best believe he that's in you is greater. Amen. Christ is revealed when, is Christ revealed when we're crushed or persecuted? Right? When you're, when you're down in the bottom and you're upset and you say, I can't have it no more. I'm upset. Lord, it was this woman you gave me. Just kidding, just kidding, ladies. But well, what, what comes out? What comes, what comes out when that person cuts you off on the road and all of a sudden your car goes through this wobble in motion and your car almost flips and you're like, whoa, 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 this person. What's, what's your instinct? <laughs> Help me, Lord, is right. Help me, Lord, for not driving up to this person and telling them. But what happens, though? What happens when we, we have these, these trials and tribulations in our lives? Are we running back to the old way? Are we running back to the vice? Are we running back to the bar? Are we, go are we running back to, back to drugs? Are we going back to smoking a pound of marijuana? Are, 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 are we going back to, so you know what? I get upset with my wife. I get upset with my husband. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to go in the chat line and find somebody else to talk to me. Somebody's going to tickle my ear and tell me what I want to hear. Are we going to go and do that? Are we going to fall for the enemy's trap every single time? We shouldn't, church. As tough as it is, there are those situations, that's, that's when your breakthrough usually is. After going through hell, and you're able to make it out of there, your breakthrough is going to be there. So it doesn't matter what you're going through right now. Maybe you might find yourself in that pit, like Jeremiah did at one point. It will get better, and you will get out of there Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. So what happens? We're there, we're persecuted, we're upset, and then, and, and, and then the enemy has a field day with us. He has a field day with our minds. I, I'm going to leave him. I'm going to leave her. I'm walking out of this. I'm leaving this job. I'm upset. All these things that are going on are just not going my way. And you, and you become upset, right? And you're like, okay, I want to give up. I wanna, I, I'm done. Take some time. Analyze the situation. See what's going on. Breathe. Take a few minutes. You know what I mean? Don't, 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 don't make a decision when you're upset or you're emotional about something. Because you know one thing I tell you? Emotion at times conflicts with common sense. Take that with you, and I'm not going to charge you for that. All right? Emotions conflict with common sense. So when you're upset about something, you're emotional about something, don't make any decisions. 
because you're going to have to pay for them later on, you know, and unfortunately, you know what, there's a consequence to everything. Kids, there's a consequence to everything. Everything you do, there's going to be a ramification for. So be smart about what you do. Be smart, be, be smart before, you, before you follow the crowd. And they'll tell you, no, this is great. This is what everybody's doing. No, well, we, we, we don't follow that. Why? Because he that's in you is? you got to remind yourself of this promise. He that is in you is greater. Amen? He's greater. So whenever you're there, remind yourself of that. You're not alone. Jesus is with you and in you. And he's ready to reveal himself to you and those around you through your trials, tribulations, and how you respond to them. Submit it to pressure with a glad heart and allowing it to refine you will bring the sweetness of Christ in you. Going back to the sweetness of that apple cider. You allow Christ, you allow God to take you through that process. What's going to come out is sweet. What's going to come out is, 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 is going to be good. Look what happened when Paul was in Malta. Everybody familiar with Malta? And not the drinks, Puerto Ricans. <laughs> Malta. I remember that, man. I remember. I used to be. I used to be. <laughs> that's it. Like, hey, Malta boya. There we go. <laughs> I remember. I remember that. I remember, I remember when I was young. I used, to, I used to go to school in Brooklyn, and you know, we we were in ESL, right? Because I came to this country when I was six years old, and I knew no English, so I was in ESL for a few years. You know, in PS Seven in Brooklyn, and you know, and and, and that would be ESL with all these other kids from different countries. You know, the Dominicans here, and then we had the the South, the other people from Peru and and Colombia and Mexico and all these countries. We were like the United Nations, right, in ESL, and um. And I remember some of my classmates, that, you know, the parents would pack the lunch and they were drinking their maltas. I'm like, dude, like, they, 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 used to act, they used to act like they were all grown, drinking, drinking, oh, I'm drinking a malta, acting like they were drinking a beer or something. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> malta. Try that stuff one time. I was like, oh, not for me, brother. <laughs> not for me, but hey, to each his own. So what, ha what happened with Paul and Malta? So th th this is towards the end of Paul's journey, right? So, so Paul is like, you know, the, the, this, this super Christian, you know, he's the apostle, you know, um, I, I personally believe that he, he was meant to be the 12th disciple, but you know what happens when man starts getting involved in things with God, and they said, oh, no, we're going to cast lots to get a new disciple to replace, who, 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 did, they, who did they replace? Judas, right? Like, we got we to replace Judas to cast lots, boom. And they pull this guy named Matthias. I think it's his name. And that's the only time you ever hear about him in the Bible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They cast it, okay, selected him, and that's it. There's nothing else about, about his work. And you can tell, you know what I mean? Like, that, that's one of those things where it's like God had a plan. You know, and he was going to lift this man up, and this man is going to be, you know, but, like I said, when, whenever a man gets involved and starts moving things around, we're susceptible to messing things up. But God is good, and he's gracious, and he's merciful, and every day he renews that for us. So what happens, right? So Paul goes out, and he goes on all these missions, goes all over the world, pretty much traveling all over, and he's bringing the word, and then he goes to certain towns, and he gets beat up. He says, in the name of Jesus, Doo! they start taking him out, punching him, kicking him, killing him, bringing him back to life. You know, like, Paul went through all that stuff, you know, like, he just... That dude, like, I'm telling you, like, his perseverance is awesome. Because everywhere that he went, brought the gospel, he was getting chased out. Oh, let me go over here. God is good. God is going to save you. Boom. Get out. Drag you out of here. Yeah, he's dead. Throw him over the cliff. You know, and, and God will bring him back. You know, so, like, Paul, he went through all, he went through so much. So now this is towards the end, right? If you, if you read the book of Acts, it'll tell you everything on there. But this, this is towards, you know, him getting arrested, and now they're going to bring him to Rome. They're like, listen, you know, we're going to bring you to Rome. You're going to appear, you know, bring your case before Caesar. And as he's going through this process, right, he's getting locked up. He's chained up. He receives from God. He's like, look, this ship is going to be wrecked. All right? This, this, this ship is going to be wrecked. You better tell these people to, you know, go dock somewhere because this ship is going to wreck. And you're all going to be, you know, pretty much left to swim. So when they didn't listen, they go through this process, right? You know, sometimes when God talks to us and tells us, hey, don't do this. But we go ahead and still do it, you know, and then, we, then we're stuck in a mess. So... They go. They get shipwrecked, right? So, 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 now, so now the, you know, the, the centurions are there on the ship, and they're like, okay, now we got to let these guys swim. But they're criminals. We should kill them, <laughs> you know? And, and then God didn't allow that because that wasn't meant for Paul then. So what happens? They get shipwrecked, shipwrecked, and they end up on this island, right? So they're on this island now, and there are these people, right? So these people that live in the island, right? These, you know, it's funny because I don't know if you guys heard about this island down in, um, down in by, like, New Zealand, down by Australia, there's an island called New Guinea, right? And this island, to this day, these people, like, they're, they're indigenous, you know? I mean, there's people like that all over the world. But 
you know, they, they, they speak a different language. They still, you know, just walk around, you know, with the bare minimum clothes on, you know, like, and they're still, you know, sleeping on trees and all that weird stuff. But, um, so, but these people were so superstitious, right? So, like, I heard one time of a, of a missionary that goes to one of these places, and, you know, they present the gospel, they get a translator, and they're like, you know, this is the story, this is, this is the gospel, this is Jesus Christ, this is who we introduce. And, and the people, like, they hear it, right, but their tradition was that they had enemies, and the enemy, the way that they'll get to the enemy is they'll befriend the enemy, and then after a while, befriending the enemy, then they'll turn on them and kill them. So, they, they, so they're thinking like, okay, you know, that, that, was, that was their tactics. So then here is the missionaries bringing the gospel and saying, this is Jesus, and this is how Jesus died and resurrected. And they're like, we get it. We understand. Judas is the hero. You know, and they're like, you know, for them. And he's like, no, you got it totally wrong. You know, Judas is not the hero. But for them... Since that's how they practiced, they befriended the enemy before they killed him. They were like, wow, Judas is the man. And it's like, he's like, no, you got it wrong. So then what happened? The guy's like, you know, the missionaries are ready to give up. They're like, this is not working. And then one morning they wake up and they hear these two mothers crying and sobbing hard. They were like, what's going on? They were like, the mother from one tribe is crying. The mother from another tribe is crying. And it was because they had lost their babies. So in order for the tribes to make peace, they have to exchange children. And they call those, those, those children, they call them the peace child. So as long as peace child one and two are alive, they have peace. So then the missionary said, yes, Jesus Christ was the peace child. And then they got it and understood it. So God makes these things happen. He prepares. He prepares people. Even to those that might not know or ever get introduced, God puts it in them. They know, you know, and I can tell you a bunch of stories of other missionaries and it's actually pretty cool. But anyways, right, so he ends up with these people and, you know, these people on this island in Malta, and they're shipwrecked. So now, they're, now it's freezing, it's cold outside, they're like, oh my God, I'm freezing, let's go, let's go get some, some wood so we can make a fire, right? So now Paul's, you know, been persecuted, he's been beat up for the longest time, now he's in jail in a ship, and, you know, the ship gets wrecked, so now they're on some island in the middle of nowhere, and now they're trying to get fire because it's cold. They're trying to get wood for the fire because it's cold. So as Paul goes down and gets wood, what happens? A snake comes and bites him in the head. Great. Just as things gonna get worse, here we go. He goes to get some, gets, gets, a, gets a stick for, to, to get his fire going, and a snake bites him. And now the, the people are looking at him, they're like, he's a man. He's an evil man. Look at him. Even the, even the snakes are biting him. So to them, it was confirming that he was a criminal. He's a criminal. That's why he gets bit. Now he's gonna die. What happens? God didn't allow Paul to die. And because Paul didn't die and didn't react of anything, these people looked at him like he was God. He was like, wow, you didn't die. God didn't allow you to die. And God is not going to allow you to die. So no matter what happens to you in your life, God is not going to leave you. So all those snakes that, the, that, that, that we were thinking, we were thinking that it's getting worse, and all of a sudden that snake comes and sneaks up on you, it's not going to kill you. What happened afterwards? The people looked at him, and it opened up a door. That said, this man gets bitten by poisonous animals, and he doesn't die. Can you come take a look at my parent that's over here dying? He's like, sure. You want me to pray for them? Goes and prays for them. Boom, healed. Goes and prays for the next person. Healed, 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 healed. What happened? God used that situation and flipped it around. That situation that was meant to kill you, that situation that was meant to take you out, God turned it around, and he made it work for good because all things work for good. Amen? So don't. Don't, don't give up when, that, when, that, when the, those things come up in your life. A knockdown is not a knockout. It's okay. You might get hit. Life might throw things at you, but it's not going to take you out. We're all going to have, we're all going to get knocked down, but it's not going to knock you out. It's not going to take you out. You see, you, see, you see what David said on Psalm 129 too? It says, many times they have persecuted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. If, everybody, if anybody knows the story of David, David got persecuted. And yet he kept on going. Amen? Thank you for joining the NBMI experience today. Like, comment, and subscribe at www.facebook.com front slash NBMINY or our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com front slash NBMICHURCH 
Also check out our new and improved website at www.newbeginningschurches.com. And finally, check out our new awesome church app, available on both Android and Apple platforms. Search your app store for NBMICHURCH and be blessed.